Welcome back to Sailing Ruby Rose. This is Ruby Rose 2 and in four weeks time we're going to be sailing. Today it's all about the details. The details here, I think they're little things that some of you eagle-eyed viewers will pick up on. Changes they made between hull number one, Supernatural, essentially the first 1370 and this boat that between the design team, myself, the CEO, we all kind of said, hmm, doesn't quite work. This is going to seem like a small touch, but it is actually, to me, it was a big thing. These are the headlining panels. The previous headlining, it was too busy, didn't quite work for me. And so I think for a cleaner look, Seawind have decided to actually make them kind of like five separate panels rather than 12 separate panels. It's a subjective thing, but I just think it looks cleaner that way. James has also reduced the number of lights by two because it was just, they were not required. But now we have a look to see things like our barbecue. Now this is obviously all taped up, but again, flush mounted barbecue, composite works of it. So we've got a preparation station here for food prep. Life raft goes there. So that is gonna be a place where we're gonna get a lot of cooking done. And your man here is reinstalling our electric winches. And I think they believe that they're reinstalling them because they decided to reinforce the backing plates slightly on all the boats. Okay, so this is underneath Ruby Rose 2. You'll be seeing us under here, I guess, as I'm scrubbing the hull. But I kind of just wanted to show you how, just the way the factory's working, I've talked about the boats. Now I'm just in a quick chat about the factory that everything is now being done on site, not between the two factories. So these are the inserts. These are the small fiberglass parts that come from that other bay. They're obviously using uh, this template to make sure the fiberglass matches the trifold door. Hello. The underneath of all these boats being used for, this is clearly carpentry. This is big carpentry bulkheads. The whole woodworking shop, parts of it are here, but I'm actually gonna take a quick walk through and show you exactly where the woodworking is. So I'm not sure if you remember the video we did with Mike, probably a year ago now about the whole production facility at factory number two. But this is actually now all sorted out here. And actually, it's pretty intense. They literally are taking this raw lumber, you know, it's bits of tree. I still find that fascinating that they actually get the bits of tree and turn it into furniture. I know that it's kind of a bit of an idiot thing to say, but you always assume that it always pre-made. I guess maybe I spent too much time in Ikea. So yeah, so they've obviously got the graded, graded wood. So all this lumber gets shipped in from different parts of the world, actually. That over there, this apparently is Croatian. And so you've got this whole lumber shop that is making the furniture. So from this, it becomes the interior furniture for the 1370. Actually, probably more than anything else, this kind of does my head in. It blows my mind that they take a tree and turn it into a boat. Actually, that's what they've been doing for tens of thousands of years. But you know what I mean, it's not a dugout canoe. Anyway, I'll take a quick walk through. So let us take a spin around the carpentry shop, which is run by the master carpenter, Kevin. Everything is built in house here. These are obviously the door edges, but they do a lot of the work with veneering. You can see these very, very thin strips of, uh, in this case, ash veneer. And these are all then bonded uh, to either foam core or to marine ply to get the final effect. It is a really, really interesting process. I actually veneered a couple of doors once in my formative years, and I can tell you it is no mean feat. But these are light, they are ash-faced in this case, and that gives you that very strong, very beautiful furniture. So really nice to see the finished product. I think what we're looking at here is either my nav desk or the workstation in the master cabin. So I'm just taking a swing past the carpentry shop. There's a, a whole raft of things I need to talk to you about. This, veneer samples. They are still finalizing the detail on the saloon table. I had a quick chat with Kevin, who is a craftsman. And he's given me some samples of the wood. It is beautiful. Walnut, no, no, this is a, a maple burl. And he's trying to get some bird's eye maple. But yeah, so basically the finish on the final table is gonna be beautiful. So I'm super, super happy about that. Love the colors, they go well. So yeah, that's gonna be a real feature of the boat. 
Okay, and another little station here. These women work super, super hard here. These are, I think this is actually part of a pantry for the 1260. It looks like that, but again, someone else will point this out. No, it's a door frame. I can see exactly where they've got the pencil marks to cut those little curves at the very top. But yeah, interesting to see this part. But also, if you just wait for us to spin around here, look past these units, we can have a really good look at the veneers that they use for the edging. And then those are obviously then put onto i think it's called a vacuum table it's basically a large silicon uh sheet that is go that goes over the top of uh the veneer and the wood and the foam core and the glue and then they apply a vacuum and it bonds everything in place which means that you get all the air out and you get a super super good bond and a quick spin up this ladder just to have a little look at these smaller parts that they're making here again it's fascinating I think if I hadn't have been a dentist or a lawyer or an astronaut, I probably wanted or would have liked to have been a carpenter. I find the whole process of woodwork, joinery and carpentry very, very fascinating. I have a very, I think I've got a keen eye for this. Lovely to see. So yeah, I just wanted to take you a quick look around the woodworking shop. This is Supernatural, hole number one. And I'm going to explain to you some things that are being changed. This, the cockpit table, the design for this still hasn't been finalized. I've had a quick chat with Kevin, the carpenter and James find out what's going on there other things that are going to be done these fiddles are now new so these fiddles are going on throughout one discussion that is ongoing is about putting a cabinet here putting a cabinet underneath the galley so that basically means that this space and i can show you really effectively there's about eight inches of space here cutting through that gives you access to more storage in the galley now i'm going to show you what i mean here just by whipping down this is the cupboard in the uh, hallway, the companionway. So you can see it's about eight inches deep. Three, not as much functionality there as if we had it the other side. So that's gonna be moved through to there. This entire area has been redesigned. So things that you will notice now, this actually is very different to the way it was when we test sailed this. There are now headboards. There are headboards throughout the boat. And because Richard said, well, why aren't there headboards? And I agree with him. It looks much, much nicer. So fans, headboards, and as I said to you before, the door now opens from the other side with a magnetic catch up there because it's easier to get into. All the handrails going down here. Now the workshop, sorry for keeping this under wraps for you. We still haven't finalized the design that's being worked on, but this is not the design that we are having. We have designed a workshop for offshore cruisers. Interior blinds that actually fit inside these recesses and they actually look really really nice very 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 beautiful blinds and i will take you down and show you the modifications to the master hull looking very 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 clean and there's no one here which is great this is a new design for the master suite so i'm going to just pan the camera around show you everything things that you will notice the bed completely redesigned so this area now is about twice as wide as it was they redesigned the whole bed, put this curved wood in so, and you don't lose that much from the base of the mattress. So you've still got a very, very wide berth, but it's smaller and easier to get into. There's now this headboard, and that looks much, much, much better, much better. Walk-in wardrobe, this is a custom job for hole number one. So we will have a door on this because I don't want to see the mess. Not that there will be any mess. And again, we have these very nice blinds all recessed inside here. Looking bloody, this is looking really nice actually. Really, really nice. These handrails. Yeah, really smart area. So with four weeks left to run, we are really getting to the pointy end of where this boat needs to be. The final modifications that were carried out on hole one supernatural are being quickly implemented on hole two, Ruby Rose two, and subsequent boats, the other eight that are here. This boat will be ready to sail in about one month and I will be on the water with Therese, zipping across the ocean somewhere. So I hope you enjoyed that. Sailing super soon, keep watching, give us a like, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment. See you all next week, take care, goodbye. Yes.